losing muscles, gaining weight, poor sleep, slow recovery, just some of the frustrating age-related and metabolic issues, but the list goes on. And treatments often mean pricey injections or medications that have a list of side effects. Can we approach this differently to boost growth hormone, muscle sleep, and fat loss without needles? Well, with the discovery of MK677, researchers are thinking yes. This powerful oral compound activates ghrelin receptors to stimulate growth hormone release to build muscle and enhance recovery. Let's take a deep dive into MK677 where I will share all my research and discoveries on this compound and where it will turn curiosity into mastery and mastery into breakthrough results. So before I begin, I must start off with a disclaimer that all the information in this video is purely educational and entertainment reasons. That any questions or concerns you may have, please seek out a licensed medical professional. That I am not a licensed medical professional. By watching this video, you agree to the terms. Now let's get straight into this video. So what is MK677? It's an oral non-peptide ghrelin agonist that increases IGF-1 and growth hormone. That's a mouthful. So it's not a peptide, it's oral, and it increases growth hormone by working on ghrelin receptors or your hunger receptors. It was originally discovered and researched for growth hormone deficiency, but then more research went into it when it came to muscle wasting, obesity, and overall age decline related issues. And now I wanna to touch on MK677 versus a SARM versus a peptide because for a long time I was kind of confused on these and actually I thought MK677 was a SARM. It's not. MK677 is a growth hormone secretagogue that works on ghrelin to increase growth hormone. Additionally, it has a longer half-life, so it stays in the body for a longer amount of time, and it's oral. A SARM is a selective androgen receptor modulator, and these target specific tissue like bones and muscles and has more anabolic effects such as testosterone has on the body, resulting in more potent effects. And additionally, it suppresses the hormones usually, where MK677 does not cause suppression. A peptide, like ipirelin, is a small amino acid chain that helps stimulate growth hormone. Well, it works very similar to MK677, but most peptides need to be injective and most peptides have a very short half-life. Example, ipirelin is like 20 minutes, where MK677 is a whole day. So in summary, MK677 is different than a peptide in a SARM because MK677 does not suppress the hormones like SARM does. It does not have a androgenic or super anabolic effect like SARMs does. It has nothing to do with testosterone. Additionally, it's oral form and longer lasting, which is very rare for peptides to fall into that category, but it works very similar as many GHRPs. I hope that made sense. If anything did not make sense, please comment down in the comments. I'll do my best to clear them up for you. So how does MK677 work? Well, it works on ghrelin receptors in the pituitary gland. And by stimulating that, it increases growth hormone and IGF-1, leading to a cascade of effects of burning fat, building muscle, or just having more growth hormone. It's important to note that first, this is very similar to how GHRPs work, the peptides like ipirelin, hexurelin, GHRP2, GHRP6, so those are all GHRPs and they all work very similar to MK677. Additionally though, it's important that MK677 tends to last up to one day in the body with the elevated levels of growth hormone where most peptides are 20 to 30 minutes. So in summary, MK677 works on ghrelin receptors to increase growth hormone, leading to all the benefits of growth hormones and building more muscle, having more bone mass, better recovery, better sleep. So now let's go into the research benefits of MK677. And these are all the benefits that are associated with increased levels of growth hormone. So increased lean muscle mass, reducing fat, better recovery in both muscle, ligaments, joints, enhanced sleep, better skin health, and it has many protective effects on the brain and the heart. Because growth hormone is very critical for both the brain and the heart. Now let's go into cautions and counterindications. And it's important to note that MK677 is more potent, which means it has more cautions and counterindications. So for cautions, I've seen hunger increase because it does work on ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, increase in water retention, increase in blood sugar, which is actually different than other GHRPs because peptides GRPs actually tend to lower blood sugar levels. But since MK677 says in the body for a prolonged time, 
it actually causes an increase in blood sugar levels. And the last caution, increase in prolactin because the ghrelin receptors are closely related to the prolactin receptors. So there tends to be, when growth hormones increase, there tends to be an increase in prolactin. And the prolactin increase is more potent with MK677 because it tends to activate the receptors for a prolonged time. Where with GHRPs, you still get a little increase in prolactin, especially the stronger GHRPs, but not as much because the receptors aren't activated for a full day, it's just for 20 minutes. And having lower levels of prolactin for men is very important for being motivated to get in erections. It has a host of important things. So you don't want your prolactin too high. And for counterindications for my research is pregnant individuals, any history or active of hormone sensitive cancers, and or uncontrolled diabetes because this does, or MK677, does have an impact on blood sugar levels. Now let's go to the dosing and cycling of MK677. And in my opinion, this is one of the most heavily abused peptides, which is why I've, I've met many individuals that have horrible effects and side effects because they overdid it and they did way too much. So when it comes to dose, anywhere from five to 25 milligrams for a dose. And when it comes to females versus males, I've seen females halving that dose. When it comes to frequency, anywhere from three to seven times a week for four to eight weeks on and four to eight weeks off. And from my experience with peptides, almost all the side effects, really bad side effects I've seen is when I see individuals running this for 12 to 16 weeks at a very high dose. And pretty much that is meaning that you have very elevated levels of growth hormone, super high for three to four months. And this can actually cause above physiological levels of growth hormone, which that is unhealthy. So this is why it's so important to be more conservative, do shorter cycles. And this is also one of the more powerful compounds when it comes to like the peptide field as a whole. So to summarize this, five to 25 mg's per dose. And for male and female, for female it tends to half that dose versus a male. For cycling, three to seven times a week for four to eight weeks on, and four to eight weeks off. Now let's go into some other peptides I would take with MK677. First would be some kind of recovery peptide. So I'm thinking BPC, TP500, KPV, GHKCU, even potentially PEG, MGF to help with muscle recovery. So it really depends on the goal. I would not add in any other growth hormone peptides. And the reason why is that MK677 is already very potent and it lasts in the body for a long time. So I would not add in like tesserelin or ipinrelin or other peptides that work with growth hormone where I think MK677 by itself is great. And the only other group of peptides I would look into would be some kind of GLPs as MK67 will raise blood sugar levels because it's active for so long. So GLPs are a great way to first reduce appetite because MK67 will increase appetite and as well manage blood sugar levels because MK677 does increase blood sugar levels. Now let's go into the supplements I would take with MK677. First would be some kind of natural diuretic as one side effect of MK677 or any growth hormone increasing compound is water retention and one of my favorite ways is through a natural diuretic. Next would be some kind of functional protein. I'm thinking bone broth or collagen. It's just really important for many different things. Next would be creatine, optional in my opinion, because I think creatine is amazing for many different things. But however though, if the individual is very hypersensitive to water retention, it might be too much. Personally for me, when I was doing a lot of growth hormone peptides and I took creatine, I just had too much water retention. So that is why I don't use creatine when I'm really doing growth hormone treatments or on myself because for me it's just too much water retention. But overall creatine is super amazing for energy, building muscle, all of that. Next would be some kind of NAD or glutathione. I think overall it's a very, very powerful supplement to add to any kind of peptide protocol. And last would be some kind of natural test booster, ideally combining organs with herbs as that can be beneficial. Actually for all sexes, actually the more research I've been doing, I realized the importance of females having high testosterone. And I also, of course, obviously the men having high testosterone and these herbs and organs can be such wonderful things, you know, to add to a protocol. Now we'll go into lifestyle tools to add to MK677. First is fasting. I really wanna highlight fasting because MK677 will increase blood sugar levels, 
where fasting will decrease blood sugar levels. So it's really good at balancing that out, especially in a natural way. Next, especially if you're a male, would be semen retention. And the reason why is that MK677 can increase prolactin, which as a man, we don't want high prolactin. And actually, semen retention, or just not losing your semen with an orgasm, is an amazing way to reduce prolactin. Because actually, when you're a man and you actually have an orgasm, your prolactin increases up to 400% for 24 hours or longer. So if we can retain that and reduce that, we can really negate having high prolactin. Personally, I'm a big fan of semen retention. It has changed my life, but I just want to throw that in there, you know, and the lifestyle tools. And moving on to others that I've said multiple times in other videos, sun and sleep and corrective training, especially rebounding, because one thing I've seen with growth hormone treatments is more re fluid retention and rebounding or on a trampoline is an amazing way to move fluid and move limp and prevent stagnation. And then raw animal-based diets or raw milk, raw honey, you know, some good meats, some good fruits can be amazing for building muscle, having great health. And then some other ones that I'm a big fan of, I see in almost all my videos. First would be some kind of body work, acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, Amazing for many different things, for helping to manage liquid management or fluid management, helping heal the body, all those different things. HBOT, help with oxygen, circulation. O oxygen is so critical for having good health. And lastly, some kind of hot and cool rounds as it has many, many benefits, but especially as you can see here, I'm really trying to manage the lifestyle tools to reduce the side effects. So I'm trying to manage blood sugar levels. I'm trying to reduce water retention. I'm trying to reduce prolactin levels, which those are all the things that happens or all the bad things that happen with MK677. So what are the pros of MK677? The first pro is that it's a potent oral compound to increase growth hormone without suppressing your hormones. And the second main pro is that it offers another way to increase growth hormone than just relying on peptides or other treatments. So now let's go into the cons of MK677. The first con is that it is potent. And when this first came out, this became really popular and I saw so many researchers first get bad compound, do way too much, way too long and get a lot of side effects. So in my opinion, it's one of the most abused peptides, unfortunately. So it's very important to keep this in mind that this is one of the more potent compounds. It's also very important to get a pure source and also very important to know what's happening and you know and to know about the compound which is why i make these videos to hopefully to make your research better off so what's my overall opinion of mk677 when i first learned about it i wanted nothing to do with it because i heard horror story after horror story people doing way too much buying bad stuff and as well i did not mind injecting so i use more of the softer growth hormone compounds like cjc apurelin because those are softer and I didn't really care about, you know, injecting. But now the more research I've done, I actually feel more comfortable using MK677 because first I know more about it, I know how to source it correctly, and I can see it being very, very beneficial. But however though, if I had a choice, you know, of, of an oral growth hormone compound, I actually would choose Sormorlin because actually we're seeing Sormorlin being as oral form, and that's much more gentle than MK677. And then after using Sormorlin and I got more experience, then I would switch over to MK677. And personally, when using MK677, I would stick to more conservative dosing and cycling schemes. And that's one thing you see on this channel. Whenever a compound's more powerful, I always go more on the conservative side because we can always increase more. But the biggest mistake I see in this field is researchers rushing in and it's doing way too much. The poison is in the dose. Well, anyways, guys, that's my video on MK677. It's not a peptide, it's kind of a peptide, but I will be expanding my compounds in this channel to talk about other things as the field changes and there's new compounds coming out. But if you want to support my channel and learn more about peptides, check out my books on Amazon, Peptides Made Simple, or check out my school academy, Peptides Academy VIP. It really depends on what you want. But if you do, you can learn a lot about peptides and you'll support this channel. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and stick around for future videos.